Hello, my name is Ian, and today we're talking about Marcia Godet's Ribbon Pools and Wedding Cakes, Tracing a New Orleans Tradition. I like this article. It's very brief. It's fundamentally a research note. But uh, I think it's, it's kind of fascinating that it just, it's, it's one of those great examples of a uh, looking at one small, um, precise, uh, idiosyncratic event and then putting it into the larger context the, the the title suggests you know tracing the tracing the history in large part because tracing the history of these things is not a fruitless effort it's interesting what I think we were always hopefully aware at this time that tradition does not need to be authenticated by the historical record that the level of something being found meaningful is not dependent on establishing without any doubt, without any um, limitation, the, um, the fact that it has some kind of very firm precedent and often in some kind of um, very distant past. Rather, we should be thinking in about what constitutes the traditional in terms of what is important for this group at this time and how do they place it within this long stretch of time? How do they understand it as part of a moment in continuity? Um, and so this is, this is an interesting example of that because it's fun to trace the historical record. Um, but she doesn't require that you be convinced by the historical record that the tradition, therefore, has some merit. Because what is it? Well, in New Orleans, starting in some indeterminate past, I'll get there in a second, um, there has been this circumstance in which, at a wedding, when the cake is brought out, it has had placed in the icing on the lower level uh, little tokens that are attached to ribbons. And the ribbons extend outside of the cake. And um, the young, unmarried uh, people in attendance uh, are invited to grab one of the ends of the ribbons. And on a signal, they all pull. And just before that, usually a photograph is taken, and that becomes one of the standard uh, photographs of the, uh, of the event. And uh, then they pull a token. And the tokens denote a number of things. A ring denotes that they will be the next one to wed. Uh, a thimble denotes, or, or a button denotes that they will be an old maid, uh, and so on. They, they are these little symbolic... Um, aspects. Uh, who gets to pull is sometimes a matter of contention and it's like it would be one of those things that the people who are organizing the wedding, the bride in particular, would have to think about. Like, oh, because not simply who do I include, but who do I therefore exclude? So there is an honor that is associated with it. Uh, it's typically the, the unmarried bridesmaids. It might be um, uh, younger uh, 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 more unmarried uh, women, yet still within the, the the close family. It wouldn't necessarily be sort of you know the, the plus ones that are that are present. They would be they 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 are invited into the this wedding uh, by by virtue of being invited to pull. So there's a status that's associated with it. It's a form of playful divination, and with all that might attend to it. Um, and so she sets about trying to trace the history of it. She, her earliest attestation is actually in her own family record, which is wonderful, where there is a, uh, she knows that her mother was married in 1928, and she knows uh, that in her uh, aunt's scrapbook there is a ribbon that uh, indicates that this was pulled from her mother's wedding. And so it becomes, you know, a literal um, remnant, uh, a, a memory object of that particular time. And um, 
And so that is the oldest attestation that she has. Um, and presumably there might be analogous things in analogous scrapbooks throughout the New Orleans uh, area. I mean, so she was she's writing in 2004, 2005. The wedding took place in 1928. She doesn't suggest it, but those aunts must have been old at that time. Maybe she did the research uh, well in, into the time. But uh, uh, so uh, throughout New Orleans, maybe there are similar scrapbooks uh, that, that indicate similar things because it would be a memory object. It would be something that, that would be kept because uh, it's just a ribbon and just a little, a little uh, silver token. Um, now the question is where it's from. And when we're talking about a place that already embraces a particular form of identity, and New Orleans is a thick cultural city, but a, cult but a city that understands itself as, a dis as distinct from, uh, from many others. New Orleans is a cultural city defined in large part by uh, its Frenchness, by uh, its um, Acadian and Creole cultures, uh, defined by uh, its proximity to the Caribbean. Uh, but fundamentally, what this is, is the, uh, this is rooted in the idea that this is something that is inherited from France. And that is the vernacular understanding of the tradition. So by doing so, one is participating in New Orleans Frenchness and putting oneself in that line, irrespective of the fact that there doesn't seem to be an attested tradition to this in, in France itself. And we go to Van Gennep, not his right, structure of the rites of passage, although that's clearly bubbling under the surface, uh, but his encyclopedia of, of French uh, of folklore and the, and the French customs therein doesn't mention this divination thing. And he spends a lot of time talking about weddings and even a lot of time talking about the cake. But there are analogs. There are analogs in terms of the Scottish tradition of putting of attaching pins to the bride's dress and tokens to the bride's dress that later on get placed upon the cake. And the uh, and the uh, the right of young women in the bridal party or at the wedding to select therefrom. There is a long tradition in New Orleans itself. Of course, there's the king cake, where um, a Mardi Gras festivity, where at the uh, a token of a uh, something signaling um, it's usually a, a, a baby, is it not? Um, is baked into a cake, and then the cake is eaten. Uh, the cake is sliced, and if you happen to have uh, the token, then good fortune bestow uh, befalls you. And so, things being baked into things, coins in pies, you know, it's a reasonably well established tradition uh, in terms of fate. And I just want to take a pause on that because, as I was reading it, one of the things that strikes me is the nature of the nature of cake the nature of pie. But I think one of the things that is kind of fascinating by it, and we, we do want to be clear that the, 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 um, the layering of things in the, the, in the bridal cake is, is an intentional act of the baker, and presumably the baker knows where it is and things are hidden and, and uh, things are, um, the actual token is disguised by icing and the additional layers of the cake, but the, um, where any individual token is, or where a token is, uh, whether, whether we know which token it is, is indicated by it being at the end of a ribbon. Uh, the thing being baked into a cake, the thing being baked into a pie, it strikes me about the nature of these large foods to begin with. Foods that are designed to be shared. Um, I mean, so why do we have a wedding cake to begin with? Well, a wedding cake is not dissimilar in some ways from a turkey at Thanksgiving. The whole point is that this is one single whole unified object that is then um, shared and served, uh, at least symbolically served, all from the same plate. So just like the way the turkey is brought to the table and it is carved and, and plates are distributed that way, even if sometimes there's like a carving of the turkey and then it's brought back to the kitchen. The idea is that we're all eating from this same plate. Um, and similarly with the cake, we are all eating from this one thing. Every, and the, the, one of the reasons that the wedding cake is so large is that it indicates that everyone is participating. Everyone is eating of this one food. And of course it is sweet. And of course it is decadent and it's sweetness uh, and its decadence, let's take, the, take those apart, 
and that its decadence is part of the customary cycle to begin with, and that this is an extraordinary thing, this is an extravagance. We are aware that this is an extravagance, but this is a time that is worthy of extravagance. This is a time that is a time outside of time. We are betwixt and between. There is a custom that is taking place here, and we celebrate in large ways by uh, conspicuously investing time and capital and effort into creating this thing that is um, only there to delight. Uh, and its sweetness then is also symbolic, and that is the, the sweetness of this food represents and resonates with the sweetness of the moment. And that is a long attested uh, thing. Well, one of the reasons that we eat sweet at, at, uh, at, at celebratory times, it's the same reason that at Passover they eat bitter herbs to remind them of the bitter times. Uh, you eat sweetness to remind you, uh, to participate in the sweetness of this moment. The literal and the metaphorical sweetness combine. So then you have this thing that is unified. The whole point is that every slice of pie is identical to every other slice of pie. Every slice of cake is fundamentally identical to every other slice of cake. It is a unified whole. And I know you probably have strategies for icing and so on, but think about the, the big picture before you tear apart the, the uh, pedantically the, the argument. And then baked into it is um, a, a token, a, a coin, or the, 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 um, uh, the baby indicating the king's cake, uh, and, uh, and so on. And so by, you know, you have, the thing therefore represents the chance that we all have. We are all participating in this, and yet some of us are going to be fortunate, and most of us are not. So there's a strange lesson that is being learned. There's a strange metaphor of perhaps it, it is not so much that fortune awaits, is that fortune is not universal, that, that we all start off with the same chance and yet it's going to befall others, uh, perhaps more often than it's going to befall ourselves, which is a bit of a bummer. But hey, at least you got cake, which is a nice metaphor. So it has this precedent, the cake pull. It has this precedent that you can trace. But we don't need to trace things in terms of absolutes. We can trace things rather in terms of the very idea that there is a syncretic aspect to it, the syncretism, the bringing forward of various things. Like, oh, okay, well, here's perhaps an influence of, of tokens in the Scottish uh, cake in the Scottish bride's tradition. Here is the uh, the pie, uh, the, the the wedding pie in which uh, a, a coin is is uh, or a ring is baked in the English tradition. Uh, here is the idea of a wedding cake to begin with. You know the move from the cake to, from the from the pie to the cake and the the tiredness of it. Uh, here is the king cake tradition in New Orleans already. And so here is, you know, someone at some period of time generated this idea. And it might be the specific bakery. What was it called? Uh, blah, blah, blah. McKenzie's. It might have been McKenzie's Bakery, um, which he indicates on page 92, established in 1924 by a Scottish immigrant. Um, it might have been their idea. And the fact that an idea has its origins in a local artisan who more or less creates something, again, intelligently, out of established motifs and makes something new, the newness of it resonates to the point where we can sort of immediately say, this might be novel, but it fits into my understanding. It fits into how I would otherwise be celebrating. I, I can make sense of this thing, and this thing is joyous, and this thing is fun, and this thing adds yet another interesting, exciting element to this day, which is already interesting and exciting, and why not? And so it's fun to examine traditions, not simply in terms of um, distant origins, because for, again, as I said, for the large part, um, 
you, you might not be able to find them. They might only be a matter of conjecture. They might only be a matter of intelligent conjecture, but sort of reconstruction. And you might not be able to find that trace. But if you find that trace instead by saying, okay, well, at some point, these various threads came together, these motifs of how to celebrate, these motifs that introduce chance, these motifs that introduce prognostication, uh, these uh, 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 motifs that introduce, uh, uh, that, you know, potentially reinforce traditional um, uh, expectations of femininity, um, you know, for however one wishes to, uh, to uh, uh, delineate them that they become this new thing, and then it becomes a thing that is also associated with place, is associated with culture, it's associated with, a, oh, in other places they do this, but in New Orleans we do this. Um, and the fact that it might have commercial origins, you know, quickly uh, went beyond that, and many other bakeries w would, would continue to do that, because after a while it's not about the origins, it's about the collective will the collective desire to continue. And, of course, it's subject to variation. The idea that at one point, one family uh, put all rings in the cake uh, for all the tokens so that everyone can be like the next bride, that's quite delightful. When someone forgot the ring, and that was devastating. And even the idea that new tokens are being introduced or old tokens are being reintroduced in terms of, well, maybe, you're, uh, maybe you know, your, your traditional roles are not necessarily the things that you want. Uh, so this, you still are participating, but these things might indicate independence. These things that, that getting the one that is not an old maid, but about starting your own business or being industrious or travel or all these, all these particular elements where it is something that is new. It is something that is uh, re, or the, the, that is participating in a different definition of what it means to be uh, feminine and what goals to aspire to, how to, how to be feminine in the 21st century, that nevertheless is tied into this uh, tra traditional form, this traditional activity, which again, I cannot emphasize enough, it's kind of fun. It's, it's fun, it's joyous, it's weird, it's quirky, and that is a rationale for doing it. So I really just love this article because it's so very brief. Um, and there's uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention. Um, and that has to do with, uh, with uh, the afterword, which maybe you didn't read. If you, uh, because it's sort of tucked in at the end. So this came out in 2006, and the production of articles is a long process. I mean, it takes time to write, it takes time to go through peer review, it takes time. So there's often a gap between when something is done, 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 it's like I'm done the thinking, I'm done the research, I've, I've written it, and when it actually appears. I mean, you know, if, if we're skipping over the, the potential sort of, yeah, you know, final edits and so on. But like, you know, this is a completed thing, at least it's now in someone else's hands. Um, and so it came out in early 2006. And of course we had Katrina in October, in uh, late August of 2005 and the, the, the devastation of Katrina. And she has this wonderful afterword, which I, I'll, I'll read, I'll read in whole because it's not too long. On the 28th of August, 2005, New Orleans was devastated by the catastrophic hurricane Katrina and the subsequent flooding of the city. One month later, on September 24th, Louisiana was hit by Hurricane Rita. The pulling of ribbons and wedding cakes may seem a rather trivial focus in the aftermath of so much loss and suffering. This custom, however, illustrates the importance and persistence of New Orleans cultural traditions. The maintenance, preservation, and celebration of cultural rituals such as Mardi Gras and king cakes, jazz funerals in the second line, café au lait, and beignets at the French market are part of New Orleans' identity, a multicultural and multiracial identity that includes all classes and socioeconomic levels. Even before the physical New Orleans is rebuilt, its cultural traditions are likely to be resurrected in some form, somewhere. So she's making a statement in that the idea of New Orleans, clearly, of course, it's a physical place. 
And this physical place is not incidental because we need the physicality of the landscape in which to inhabit and meet not simply our base needs, but also our cultural needs, a place to commune, a place to feel safe, a place to feel um, connected uh, and protected. Uh, and yet, her suggestion that these things, these even, these ridiculously small, trivial, convivial moments, like the pulling of ribbons, those are the things that have persistence over time. Because it is not the, the tangible culture alone, the infrastructure, the buildings, that define a place. It is the intangible culture as well. It is those things that exist only because they are actions that people continue to do. That they do so out of choice, they do so out of all the possible um, options that are available to them. Say, no, I am doing it this way because it is important that I do it this way. I will bring my own to it. I will do it in a new way. I will do it in an innovative way, but I will be making these decisions, at least in part, uh, based on precedent, because that precedent is who I am in relation to who I am, uh, to the, the, the larger group, to my past, to my place. And that's not an incidental thing. So um, that's just a nice affirming thing to end an article on. And clearly, I mean, on the level of typesetting, this is like very last minute. It's like I cannot publish something about New Orleans in early 2006 without mentioning this. And rather than sort of, and she, you know, she doesn't write off her own work by saying, yeah, it's so, sorry, this is just bad timing. She said, no, it's these things. It's, it's the interstitial moments. It's the uh, it, it, it's the tiny little performative creative acts that actually turn it, and the seemingly trivial, that are fundamentally part of the human project. Hooray! Good for her. So, this is a, for me, this is a pretty short video. Um, my name is Ian. Today I've been talking to you about Marcia Godet's ribbon pulling and wedding cakes tracing a New Orleans tradition. It's excellent. It's very small, very short, very concise, thick and rich at the same time. As ever, my friends, be well, be good, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.